what were some things that you took away from what he took out of the program, I guess, or what he put in with those um, athletes compared to early days where he was working with yeah, more, yeah, I guess, healthy athletes? I flew to the States. I drove from Florida, myself and another coach, Michael Afalaka, we drove from Florida through Louisiana, through Texas, I don't know, wherever we went, and we saw six coaches, six world-class coaches who had coached medalists and, and, and NCAA champions, etc. And the common denominator across the board was that their, their microcycles, be it a six-day build-up with a high-low, be it a five-day with, with a day off in the middle of the week, um, and just having two high sessions, um, be it a, a program that was more towards, let's say, aerobic, anaerobic conditioning, decent volume, pushing the limits of the physiological system, especially just from an um, anaerobic uh, ability to regenerate. So there's one side. You had other people who had gone more of a speed power route. How much from a percentage point of view do you bother on the basics of teaching them optimal shapes to project and you know, react and switch really well and then to, at, to a point do you then start to focus on okay let's make this specific to your sport um, and perhaps getting you know as low as a as a uh, as a hundred meter sprinter might not be as relevant once they've understand the basics fundamentals do you then to you know do you get them more upright in their acceleration uh, in shapes and angles that they're going to hit I guess uh, in their sport if that makes sense yeah it makes sense and and maybe there's some layers to it so maybe the first layer to be clear about is especially this past three years we've we've had different ai systems at the moment view motion is is definitely the best ai system out there in the world for video analysis and so we we have a really cool partnership with view motion it's, it's coming up to a year now maybe maybe it's exactly a year now that we're in october and um but even prior to that we've been collecting quite a lot of field-based analysis of teams, team players. Rugby, football at, at the most, over the past year, AFL and Rugby League, um, and, um, and uh, NBA and, and, and NFL. Now, I'm sure you've seen great players who may not fit your technical model on the field, but they probably run fast, they're just not efficient. They are effective, but not very efficient. But at least they're effective. So that's the first place to start that performance on the field has to be our movement screen. And everyone believes that, but when they come down to doing it, they don't know what to see. There's so much controversy. Um, sprint training has been made very mythical. Um, sprint training has been made very academic. The fast university guys over in the States are condemning how academic it's been made. Obviously, I love science. I collect science. We do research. We collect data. But the whole thing about our process and speed solutions as an app, for example, is that you can create analysis using view motion. We can have all of that data, 50, 60, 100 pieces of data for one run. We can throw it into our system, let, let the algorithm do its thing, and it can give you a few priorities to work on. What's a way that you engage those star players that are performing really high level? They haven't had injuries to that point in their career yet, so it's not a problem, but like you said, you want to um, work on it now before it is a problem uh, and before it's a bigger problem. Uh, how do you find to get buy-in from, I guess, that particular athlete or to engage them? Um, what's the, yeah, the, I mean, the buy-in question always trading. comes up. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's a challenge for me sometimes because buy-in isn't really a thing for me. Um, I, as a while ago, I talked to Ben Rosenblatt about, I don't know what I was talking on, I was talking crap about something but um he said no i don't want buy-in i don't want i don't want people to buy in i'm not trying to sell i want people to go on a journey i want people to understand so i, I guess if from that i'm saying buying is more like education i never have to create buy-in i show people look this is how you move great you're a world-class performer great i'm not trying to change you i'm trying to evolve you i ask lots of questions i'm always asking people how they feel in team sports um especially contact sports often how you feel is the last question you've been asked maybe you've never been asked that question how you feel about a movement so sometimes it can be strange and confusing for people but i give them lots of uh, james wild talks about old and new right the, the good and bad contrast i'm always providing contrast in fact 
half the time I encourage someone to do a drill and if they're going to do it poorly, I let them do it twice poorly. I let them feel it. Then I give them some very small cues, analogies, some feelings, some goals. Yeah, I create an environment for them to explore a new, new movement pattern and I ask them how it feels. And they're like, oh, actually, my old way isn't actually the best way because you've shown me this new way, but it's completely contrasted to what I've been taught. You're telling me the complete opposite thing to what I would normally do, but I've tried it and it feels good.